Well, here's the part that a lot of you have been waiting to see, and that is the actual slides that's going to guide the uh, upper die holder, keep it on track. This right here is some old restaurant cutting board that we cut on the table saw, planed it down, and it works really easy. I was impressed. That little guy right there, I was trying to do 5 16 bolts instead of 3 8 I don't know why. Ended up breaking the tap off in there, and it didn't take much, but that's half-inch plate steel. That little tap wasn't liking it so much, so... We went through the rest of them, they're tap 3 8 Over here, up here we have four set screws in there. The, uh, they're 3 8 5 8 inch long, so they countersink. We couldn't use regular bolts in there, otherwise they'd be hitting the rams when that thing goes up. So, that's where we're at. I will cut to the chase and show you guys exactly how we made that stuff. I uh, tried to do this without blocking the shot on you. Uh, let's see. Now I may end up needing to plane some of these down a little bit. At least the one in here, I have a feeling. But the. Um, and obviously we got to trim these things down pretty good too. It's not too bad really. We got a stray cat in here that found its way and hanging out, friendlier than hell. But he thinks he can just come and visit and walk in like he owns a place. Now let's see if this one fits. And when I don't pay attention to him, the little bastard starts screaming. Okay, yeah, we gotta plane this one down. Be right back. Uh, let's try this. Got her about as thin as I dare go with it. Well, it's close. But. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, right? There you go, that's what I'm looking for. Now, let's see. Ok, 
Okay, let's get the sides in. Get this guy welded up. This thing's going to be a prick the whole time. And throw the Throw the sides in the back, or the sides in first, front and back in first. That's what I'm going for. I'll tell you guys about using my words. Actually not bad. Let's see. Let's see just how out of square we are on this. I know these sides are good and square to that bottom die holder. I don't even know if I want to look, guys. Well, that's pretty nice. That's that cut right there in that plate. I should have checked that. We're going to weld this pig right there before it changes its mind. comments and from a cousin of mine who's pretty much a career welder you're welding vertical not to go from up to down I found with this rod it was kind of the opposite so when I was going down to up the weld was actually falling out and uh, though the flux was all over the place but I found with this if I bury it turn the heat up good and go from up to down, that flux actually stays above the rod and it fills in. I'll show you guys a close up of the, uh, the vertical welds with this, with this rod. Um, it definitely made a big difference. I had a comment on that, wondering why I was welding that way. But hopefully, that explains it.
Let's see, what did you guys do with the pens that I just had in my god darn hands? <laughs> Jeez, right there. It's like amateur hour here, you know what I mean? Every night it's amateur hour. Okay, let's see. Oh, better than I thought. Oh, you're so sexy. I want to take you home. Guys, we are about ready for hydraulics. Is that not awesome? Get me back into something I'm a little more comfortable with, know a little bit more about <laughs> this stuff here. You know, I could build most things, and I'm not afraid to build anything. I often get the comments, well, why didn't you just buy one? Well, folks who ask that question, I think sometimes miss the point of how much it means to actually build something yourself and the satisfaction you get from that is amazing. It's just a very special thing. Not everybody can say, yeah, I built something like that. Now the big thing will be, will it work? And that'll be That'll be the big thing. It'll work. He's got to be a little more stubborn than the next guy. I think with all these bolts in here for adjustment, I think we're going to do really well. All I'm going to do is kind of snug all these up a little bit. I'm not going to go nuts tightening them down just yet. It's basically I want to see what I need to do to make them stay in place. I am going to have to pull them out too, cut some oil and some grease grooves in them. The other thing I'm going to have to watch is I have to make sure I tighten this stuff evenly. It won't do me any good to have it all cattywampus in here. Uh, I have to check the battery level. Yeah, we're alright still. Okay, let's cheat a little bit here. Oh, see what I mean right there. Burned it up already. Holding the camera by hand right now, so if it's a little shaky, I apologize. So that right there, you guys see that okay? And that's one of the vertical welds right there going from, uh, from up to down. Absolutely beautiful weld. Now you can see where I started going uh, down to up, and my flux was just puddling there, and the weld was not coming out very well. And this one I ran a little hotter. And we got a good weld there. These welds right there are not as pretty. Just not as pretty at all. But they work. 
shouldn't go anywhere. Those those welding rods are pretty big, so we still have to make some gussets. I want to get at least two in here. Probably only really need one, but I'd rather get one close to each side of the uh, the rams here. But we're nice and even right there. Nice even gap. So remember, you're going to have uh, another inch worth of plate all together with your dies. So a half inch plate steel that the dies are going to be welded to. And that's where we are at. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed it. I, uh, I'm certainly enjoying it. A little more thinking involved with this one. When I'm unsure of something, I don't do a lot of explaining because I, I honestly, I don't want to put crap information out there for you guys. I don't want somebody to get hurt building something like this because I didn't know what the hell I was doing and they followed my example. When this thing gets tested the first time, we're going to take it real slow, real easy. We'll probably dial back the, uh, we'll probably dial back the pressure a little bit and just kind of see how it tracks. Now, like I said, these here, I may have to put some tabs on here as keepers. I'm not sure how I'm doing that yet. Kind of what I'm hoping that these bolts sink into this the slide material enough to where they hold it in place where it needs to be. I think probably what would be the best bet here, and probably the smart thing to do, would be to get some brass, some thick brass plate. So the outsides here are 3 8 insides are about a quarter. Uh, that'd probably be about the best, probably be the smartest thing to do. And then I could put countersink a little bit for the bolts so it stays in one spot. But, um, you know, I see a lot of people building power hammers using this stuff as the slides and they seem to work just fine. It's just going to have to be something we watch. And as long as we're not binding this way at all, and we're going up and down smooth, and the dies are coming together straight the way they're supposed to do, we'll be fine. But um, anyway, that's where we're at so far. We still have a lot of damn work to do on this, but we are so close. I think uh, coming up we're probably going to start working on the hydraulic skid. I still have to do the C-frame portion, but I'm still kind of thinking about how I want to go about it because I, I have to make sure that it's not going to rack the rest of this thing at all when I use it. But, I mean, there's a whole lot of steel here. It should be... I say it should be plenty strong, but you guys know how that goes. It just... you just never know. That is such as life and such as the way she goes, but I am happy with it. So, anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one.